a look at last night's camp. This is a little rock wall I made to kind of block the wind. It was coming from this direction. Of course, the wind died down shortly after sunset. It wasn't really needed. But when that wind was whipping, man, all sorts of this poof dirt was just flying around inside my tent, getting all over everything. Awesome view. It's the Bill Williams River down here. And today I'm just gonna walk the edge of this mesa. So last night I camped uh, probably right there where that little notch is. I believe that's where the road ends and then the rest of that mesa juts out. And then, you know, kind of walk my way all the way around to this point. And then there's all these points that jet out here and offer nice scenic views. So my goal is to hit up a couple of these along the way instead of just walking right by them. And now this would have been a decent camp spot. Would have had to move some rocks out of the way, but right on the edge and everything. Man, what a view. And you know, as barren as it looks down there, I almost wonder if a forest fire rolled through here. Yeah, you know, it's green down here. And it's green over here. It's pretty charred, pretty brown. Pretty ugly looking, actually. Otherwise, you know, this would be a pretty beautiful spot. A little valley filled with some color at this time of the year. Be a really nice thing. You know, a lot of people don't realize the inside of these cactus is actually wood. You can see a dead one right here. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, but you're a bastard. Yeah, the road kind of follows roughly the edge, but you know, not quite close enough to get a view. So every now and then, just leave the road and uh, try and get to the edge and get a decent view. So my plan was to go all the way out to the end of this mesa, uh, you know, and then there's really, this is sort of jets out and then you have to come all the way back and it's like a mile or more each way. You kind of start looking at that and it's like, all right, well, you know, two miles for, for one view that I've pretty much already seen. It's an excellent view, uh, but I don't know what additional is to be gained from this view that I haven't already seen, you know, from over here. And besides that, it's all burned down there, you know? So, you know, these are the kind of questions that I grapple with on a daily basis. So I decided to go for the Mesa, heading there now. You know, it's gonna take me about an hour out of my way, but I guess that's why I'm out here, right? You know, to see all these things that I plotted out, you know? This is the end of the mesa. Long way to walk to get a couple of pictures, but here we are. At least I get a nice view of a little bit more greenery down here in the valley than the than the burned out section that was behind me. That all looks pretty nice. All right, well, you know, it was a good view, but I was kind of surprised with the lack of campsites at the end of these mesas. I thought that with these four by four roads leading to the to the edges, some of the people that would come out here would at least 
you know, have a little cleared flat spot to camp or something, but really hasn't been the case. I would thought about walking the edge of this rim here just to get this awesome view, you know, the whole, the whole walk back, but I figure I'll just go out to the edge here, get one quick peek at it, and then head back to the road and take a quick walk back. Oddly enough, I almost enjoy this view better than the, the view on the other side. I almost walked right by this one, you know. <laughs> this big sweeping canyon here. I love canyons like this. The vertical drop off, you know. I don't know what it is about this type of view, but I've always kind of been drawn to these type of canyons. These type of mesas. Good stuff. I said I wouldn't walk the edge of this. Mesa, I said I'd walk the road, but here I am walking the edge of this mesa, you know. digging these views. This road has actually been quite scenic. It's time to leave this road, this ridge line, and start dropping an elevation. My map shows a 4x4 road and uh, apparently this one doesn't get used anymore. I, I've walked right by it, I didn't even see it. Just got these dark colored rocks here, but yeah, this is it. Old 4x4 road. There's definitely not a lot of shade around. But I just came to this tree. So this is going to be my lunch spot. Now I'm kind of looking at the route I have ahead of me. Basically just gonna keep following this dirt road downhill for a ways and hit a wash. There's a canyon that runs through here. There's a guzzler that has some water. And then ultimately out in the, the big flat plains out there, it's called the Cactus Plain. left the road now. Just making my own path here through the desert. First antler shed I found in this whole this whole route. Really haven't seen any deer. In fact I haven't seen a single one. According to my map, it's a guzzler right on top of that hill. Let's check it out. There it is. It exists. Now does it have water? And can I get to it? The animals have been drinking. They're drunk. Yeah, this thing's way larger, way more elaborate than the ones they have in uh, Nevada. Rainwater falls on this, drains down into this, it's stored in tanks, and then it's piped down to the drinker for the animals to access. This tank the water stored in. Yeah, it's not it's not even that bad, you know? It's pretty clear. The aqueduct is actually about a half a mile away from the guzzler, and in fact, it runs underground right underneath the guzzler, so it could be piped into the guzzler somehow for like a permanent water source.
That's it for the guzzler. I'm gonna find out real quick if I can access the water that's in the aqueduct further up. And I know there's gonna be water, it's 100%, you know? I, I'm not, not questioning that, right? It's only a matter if I can access it. So anyways, I took three liters with me. Chugged a liter and a half. Cleaned up a little bit. Actually feeling refreshed for once. There it is, there's the aqueduct. It's the Hayden Roads Aqueduct, which supplies water to the city of Phoenix from the Colorado River. And basically right at this point, it goes underground. Yeah, so this next part of the walk, it's not gonna be the most interesting. And unfortunately, this part of the state, there's just really no good way to connect everything. This is kind of the best way. I think it's just gonna be the most direct. It's not the most scenic, you know? Here it is. There's actually some really good flow to this. As far as accessing that water too, you know, that's sort of a steep bank really going down. That's not really the kind of thing you want to be crawling down to and scooping up a bottle of water out of this. <sighs> this is not turning out the way I'd hoped. And I also wish I would have brought more than three liters with me now. There's a car up there. Like an awning, looks like some sort of trailhead or something. Let's see what this sign has to say. Day use area. 16 and a half feet deep, 24 feet across. Uh, the entire length of the canal is fenced to protect safety. It's also monitored 24 hours a day by remote cameras and alarms at all the pumping stations. Well, I was planning to stay on the other side of the aqueduct. But since there's so few places to cross it, I decided I'd cross here at this road. There is one further down, but I don't want to chance it. It just so happened a couple people were driving by, checking my maps. They stopped and gave me this water. So instead of three liters now, well, I got like six plus. So I am good to go. And so now this is basically my route. I'm just going to follow this fence line. It's gonna be like 20 miles in town. Something like maybe, I don't know, like 12 miles or something along the fence line, I think. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe another eight in the town. I'm just glad that there's this path to follow here along the fence line because on the other side, when I first started walking this, there wasn't anything like this. It just, you know, you'd be walking off trail if you wanted to walk along the fence line. So at least this gives me a path to walk. Well, this is kind of interesting. A bunch of seashells just piled up here. They must collect in the aqueduct and then they just clean them out and like throw them aside. See prohibentrar. No humans. Actually, it just says no men. Guess women are allowed. Guess this tunnel goes under the aqueduct. Guess if I needed to cross, I could. The hum of these power lines sounds like some sort of futuristic laser battle. Drove my chaffy to the levee, but the levee was fenced off. And I, I couldn't get to the levee to, to drive it. Ah, <sighs> such a dork. Nice sunset though, accentuated by these uh, power lines. I just climbed up to the top of this hill, basically just following the road. I was hoping there'd be a place to camp up here, but I don't see anything. Except a nice sunset in the city of Tucson's uh, water supply. It's supposed to be cloudy tomorrow. That's kind of moving in tonight. And that's making a pretty nice sunset. Something I haven't had like this this whole trip, really. It's been just bluebird skies every day, you know? And it's the clouds that make these beautiful sunsets. 
Well, tonight there's plenty of flat places to camp. It's just all rocky. Somewhere down here in this wash should probably work. 